And so that's what viewpoint does. Uh, it is three dimensional, meaning that we actually it's four dimensional, which means that we can uh, we can look at a time series of data in a three dimensional environment, and and it works with both virtual as well as augmented reality devices. So uh, we gain an extra dimension that, to show data, whereas everybody today uh, in every legacy tool that presents cybersecurity data, it's in two dimensions. And um, you know, I like to use the analogy of Looking at cybersecurity tool output today is kind of like watching a baseball game through a drinking straw. You might be able to see the pitcher wind up and pitch the ball, but by the time you try to look see if the batter hit it, the ball's in play. And there's just not enough information coming through that user interface to give you the situational awareness you need uh, to make rapid progress in investigations. Viewpoint is our attempt to fix that so that we can show the entire environment as a backdrop so that you gain situational awareness about you know, which computer is talking to which computer. You can automatically see, for example, the DNS server or the mail servers or the domain controllers or file servers just based on the patterns of traffic that you can see naturally. And then you overlay that with the various um, discrete pieces of information. Like I said, with regards to intrusion detection systems, you, know, you have uh, IDS alerts that you can layer on top of all that information. So you can see the breadcrumbs that analysts use to put together uh, a map of an intrusion. And again, that's the goal is find the, find the intrusions, map them out and get them stopped before they create damage or impact. But that's viewpoint in a nutshell. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now, do you have any customer success stories you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. Um, we can basically walk down the lane of every single business um, line that we have and talk about things. I mean, we, we do some pretty cool stuff. We're, we're not very – we don't have a large marketing budget, and what I mean by that is you, know, you don't see our name on billboards and airports. Um, but what we can tell you about it are the things that – and, again, what we can tell you about. There are a lot of things we can't uh, are, are, are for um, you know, organizations that are out doing a lot of good. Uh, we do a lot of work with nonprofits. Uh, we do a lot of work with um, small businesses that uh, you know, need our preventative – capability to um, do their jobs and not worry about cybersecurity. So um, as far as customer success stories are concerned, uh, you know, I guess where I can start is uh, a, 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 pub, a, a trading company uh, that uh, works on a, a trading board um, that had, had us in to do a penetration test. So these folks are, they're basically trading um, stocks. You know, they have an online trading platform that allow their customers to trade stocks. They got a lot of clients. Um, we were able to go in and, and figure out that uh, they had a pretty badly configured web application that allowed us to gain access to their entire production environment. This was on Saturday at about 2.30 in the morning. We were testing after hours um, just so that, uh, you know, we don't have any potential impacts to their production environment because most people aren't using it at that time. But we were able to get in at 2.30 a.m. I called this person who was our point of contact for this client and said, hey, look, you know, we, we found a real big problem, and we're not sure we're the first people to find it, and that's what we're trying to figure out right now. But in the meantime, you need to get your team together, and you need to close this big hole that we got. So that was an example of us finding a major problem for a client that asked us to test their environment and find abilities. Well, we found one, and it was, it was pretty enormous, and uh, it got fixed in a quick hurry, and they really appreciated our, our ability to just instantly reach out, get it resolved, and, you know, notating that in the test that, hey, we found this, it got fixed in an hour and a half, and, uh, and, and that problem's closed. That shows a lot of value to the client and uh, obviously shows the kind of risk management that a, a good penetration test engagement can provide. So that's an example of testing. Um, with regards to consulting, we have helped large multinationals deploy the cybersecurity framework so that they can evaluate where their risk areas are. Um, we have been to, for example, Third, uh, you know, we've been to uh, places around the world to do assessments and, and site surveys uh, to understand where the risk is on the, in those remote offices for, for companies based in the United States. And we've helped them understand, you know, what they need to do to manage that risk. Uh, from MDR's perspective, I mean, we've, we've stopped uh, intrusions that were uh, in progress and were able to explain to the client what needed to happen, why it happened the way it did, and basically prevent uh, loss. And we've got several stories like that. I'm, 
not going to be able to get specific because I don't, you know, the last thing our clients really want is for us to tell everybody that we're their cybersecurity uh, vendor. You know, it's just not a good idea. That being said, I can tell you that we've solved for a lot of these kind of problems for lots of different clients in the MDR space. Uh, and then with, with regards to incident response, we've, we've been able to prove that an intrusion was not, uh, did not lead to data exfiltration. So we were able to explain that, yes, this client, this incident response, uh, this breach victim had a, an intrusion, and we could see exactly what the attacker did. They got in, they looked around, they couldn't find anything. Unfortunately, they didn't see all the personally identifiable information on the database that they were actually connected to. Uh, and we could show that. That's not something that um, a lot of forensic firms have that capability. Um, but th that's not something that you can necessarily guarantee whenever you go into an incident response. Uh, but that's certainly something that we look for because if we can explain that, yes, there was an intrusion, but that, uh, you know, fortunately there is zero uh, evidence that the attacker was able to access sensitive data or something that, for example, might trip a legal requirement to notify people, uh, then we've done a good job for them because we've, we've been able to clearly explain what happened and clearly describe what their liability is as a result of that. So that's kind of a rundown of various different success stories that we've been part of for our clients over the last eight years. Okay. Um, now, obviously, there are tons of cybersecurity vendors out here in the United States. What separates Angle Security from other vendors? I think you alluded to a little bit in the last question, but could you maybe elaborate just a little bit more? Yeah, you bet. Um, well, first let me just say that there's just not enough people in cybersecurity right now. There's uh, 360,000 open jobs as of about a year ago. Um, so, you know, there's, there's not enough folks out there. Uh, one of the things that separates us from from the rest of the people and the you know the rest of the companies in cybersecurity industry is that uh, we've been around for a while. This was cybersecurity wasn't something people talked about very often in 2010. In fact, it was information security or information assurance, um, and which is why you know you don't see cybersecurity in our business name. Uh, we've been around for a while, and there are others who've been around longer, but uh, we've been around through the the sort of the big big news items. Uh, and we've been part of many of those big news items when it comes to breaches. Uh, we've got hands-on experience in identifying nation state level uh, intrusion events and helping to remediate and clean up and then prevent future occurrence of some of the most gnarly uh, cybersecurity events uh, that you will ever read about. Um, we were hands-on in many cases on some of the ones that you've, you've, you've heard about in the news. So that kind of breach experience and the amount of ex knowledge that we've gained as far as what things broke, when, when, when the breach occurred, which controls didn't work, uh, which controls could have worked had they been configured correctly, and what was that right configuration, and how should these things have worked, and, you know, what was the design and where did the design fail? Those are the kinds of things that I think set us apart from most of the rest of the cybersecurity industry just because we can take that knowledge and use it to build something like Viewpoint, for example, or our MDR offering. I mean, the, the, the capabilities that we deploy in our MDR, for example, are directly der uh, they're derived from the experience and knowledge that we gain in breach response. So the tools that we're using are things that we know work because we've used them in breach response. And, of course, we've matured those tools over you know the last three years. Um, so I would say our, our length of time in the industry – the amount of specific knowledge we have with regards to where things go wrong in cybersecurity risk management and our ability to fix them and, and, and most importantly, prevent them where, where possible. That's what sets us apart. Hey, sounds, uh, sounds awesome. Now, do you offer your customers like a free trial or a free risk assessment before they decide to go ahead with a purchase order or a buying decision? Yeah, we do offer a proof of concept. Uh, most of our clients at this point uh, understand the value, uh, but we do have a few every once in a while that would like to do a proof of concept, and we also have a partner program that we offer for, for example, managed service providers, so the, the good folks out there fixing things. I mean, we partner with lots of MSPs, and our job is to find things that they fix. Again, our job is to figure out what those intrusions look like, map them out, and then get them in front of somebody who can fix that problem and make sure that uh, – it gets resolved as fast as possible. So in those cases, for those MSPs, 
um, you know, we're, we're kind of a show me type uh, organization. So we'll go plug in a, uh, our, our MDR offering and give a, a give our potential partners uh, uh, the kind of service that they're going to wind up reselling to their clients. So we want them to know that whenever we plug our stuff into their clients, that they're get, their clients are getting the best they they possibly can. So a proof of concept makes sense. Um, you know, th- that's again for the sort of MDR client. Uh, we also offer case studies and you know, white papers for folks who are looking at things like risk assessments, you know, why does a risk assessment make sense for us? And, uh, you know, how, how would that go? How would we execute a risk assessment? What's the approach look like? Uh, so from the consulting side, we've got white papers and other resources that we can provide our potential clients uh, so that they can understand where we would benefit them. Okay. Sounds good. Now, do you have a partner program? Like do you, um, partner up with other um, cybersecurity companies or other tech companies? That's right. Absolutely. So our partner program is primarily focused on the preventative side of the business. You know, we kind of lump things into preventative. That would be consulting, testing, and, and MDR, and then reactive, and that's the incident response side. Although we do partner and sub, for example, a lot of times we'll be a subcontractor for a very large breach because – you know, our our friends and partners from years of working in some response will call us and ask us to help them solve a hairy problem. But, uh, you know, we, so we, we can jump in and, and work with other incident response firms. We do that quite a bit. Uh, but we we certainly partner with uh, other technology firms, especially, for example, those that are out there managing IT infrastructure. Uh, so we will go out there and, you know, assist their clients, our job being to identify uh, what risk exists, whether or not that risk is being realized. In other words, if there's an intrusion or a compromise or if there's just data being exposed to the Internet when it shouldn't be, and then providing that to our partner, that, that situation with all of the things necessary to fix it to our partner. And, of course, we, we also you know, are able to prevent a lot of that stuff uh, with some of our technology. But we partner with folks so that we can offer a full-scope solution from risk identification, management, and resolution uh, for, for issues that are discovered. Uh, as far as consulting is concerned, uh, we can partner, we partner, for example, with a lot of folks that do government work. So they'll have to have, as part of their government contract, uh, they'll have to have a, uh, a cybersecurity assessment of that project, and they'll have to have a documented uh, system security plan, for example. Some of the things that I did for WhiteHouse.gov back in 2009, we still do a lot of that in partnership with some larger firms that are, you know, for example, standing at websites for uh, large departments in the U.S. government. So we partner with a lot of different people uh, for various reasons, um, and, and it allows us to focus on what we're best at, which is cybersecurity risk management. Okay. Um, do you have, like, a bar, like a value-added reseller program for a uh, model for your sales? Yes, we do. That's right. And, um, okay. you know, uh, I, I assume that we're going to be talking about the website but there's a, there's a link on the website where you can go and just click and uh, ask about being a partner, and we'll get back with you. 